Okay, so here we are at Canto 3 as we kind of progress our way through uh, Dante's Inferno. And um, in this in this lecture today, what we're going to look at is Canto 3. And so when we left Dante um, last, he had steeled up enough courage to continue the journey. Remember, he was doubting whether he had the value or the worth to do it. Um, Virgil recounts how three great women, uh, Rachel, St. Lucy, and, um, and Beatrice, have implored him to help this man who's worthy of their love. And so Dante decides he's going to continue, um, and so he does. So in Canto 3, we open with what's probably the most famous uh, line, I guess, from the Inferno. Um, and so Dante has been traveling with, with Virgil, uh, and then they've, they've reached, or they've gone downward, and they reach this, this tomb, uh, and there's a, 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 an inscription above it. The tomb is like a, a cave. It's the entryway into hell. Now, this is very important because we talk about, you know, the context of, of the motif of Christianity that's running through here. And the idea that Christ begins his life in a cave. So we talk about, you know, there's no room at the inn. So Mary and Joseph have to have the baby out in a manger. Well, most likely that manger was not a, a, a wooden structure as it's kind of depicted, but it's probably cut out of the hill. It was probably like a little cave spot that could offer some uh, comfort from the uh, the elements. So in a way, it's, it's a part of the earth. It's from the earth. And then at the end we have of Christ's life, we have him placed in the tomb. And it's in the tomb that he is returned again to the earth. And so Dante too must begin his trip by entering into the womb of the earth, entering into this kind of cave, this cavern. And so at the front of this, and this is very intimidating, Dante sees these words inscribed, uh, and it says, and you'll see them on the screen, I am the way into the doleful city. I am the way into eternal grief. I am the way to a forsaken race. Just as it was that moved my great creator, divine omnipotence created me and highest wisdom joined with primal love. Before me, nothing but eternal things were made and I shall last eternally. Abandon every hope, all who enter here. And so we see these words just as Dante does, abandon all hope, ye who enter here. And we're puzzled like, the hell is going on here? Where are we? And Dante realizes that this is a big deal. And what he's got in this description that he doesn't realize and that we may not realize until we're well into the journey is this is the key to how you get out of hell, okay? And how you proceed on to either purgatory or into your heavenly reward. You have to abandon your hope in order to leave. Now, what does that mean to abandon your hope? You have to hope you get to heaven, right? All of the sinners in hell are in hell because they have no faith. They have replaced that faith in something better, that faith in God, with a, a belief and a hope that they will get their sin. They're always hopeful that they're going to get it. It's that, that physical body, uh, physical need that we see in those sins um, of incontinence. It's that intellectual need and we see in those sins of malice and fraud. Those needs are all about hope. They're, they're all about the future. They're not about the present. And so what the words tell you, abandon every hope, all you who enter. If you want to get out, if you want to leave this place, you must have faith. Faith and hope are not the same thing. Faith is a certainty. It's a confidence. It's not, it's not a wish. It's not a dream. So the words are very clear. If you wish to leave, if you must abandon those things that cause you to hope. You must be confident. You must, you must believe. You must have faith. And so Dante continues, I saw these words spelled out um, in somber colors inscribed along the ledge above a gate. Master, he's talking to Virgil, I said. These words I see are cruel. He answered me, speaking with experience. Now here you must leave all distrust behind. Let all your cowardice die on this spot. We are at the place where earlier I said you could expect to see the suffering race of souls who lost of the good and the good of intellect. Placing his hand on mine, smiling at me in such a way that I was reassured, he led me in into those mysteries. And so Virgil says, Your cowardice dies here. Come with me now. 
and Virgil agrees. He takes him his hand, he lets him grab his shoulder, and they proceed down through into the gates of hell. And then as soon as he enters, Dante hears sighs and cries and shrieks of lamentation echoed through the starless air of hell. At first these sounds resounding made me weep. And again, we hear that idea of weeping, not crying, that weep that comes from the inner, the, the soul, okay? Um, it's an empathy. We don't cry through empathy, we weep with empathy. Tongues had confused a language strained in anguish with cadences of anger, shrill outcries and raucous groans that joined with sounds of hands, raising a whirlwind storm that turns itself forever through that air of endless black, like grains of sand swirling when a whirlwind blows. And I, in the midst of all this circling horror, began, teach her, what are these sounds I hear? What are souls are these that are so overwhelmed by grief? And he said to me, this wretched state of being is the fate of those sad souls who lived a life, but lived it with no blame and with no praise. They are mixed with the repulsive choir of angels, neither faithful nor unfaithful to their God, who undecided stood but for themselves. Heaven to keep its beauty cast them out, but even hell itself will not receive them, for fear the damned might glory over them. And so this is outside of hell. This is when you enter the gates, there's a, a, a chamber, an antechamber before you actually enter hell proper, which is where limbo begins. This is the realm of the uncommitted. Now the uncommitted are those angels, he calls them, or those persons in life who get praise, who never, neither get praise, nor do they get any kind of, uh, you know, detestation. You can't feel anything for them. These are the people who didn't choose. So in the great war with Lucifer, when God and his army battled Lucifer and his armies, these were the angels who refused to pick a side. These were the people that we know, the people that we are, that refuse to believe in anything. We will believe whatever wind blows us from one side to the other. We take no opinion. We do those things that are expedient only for us. And so what Virgil's clear here and what Dante is even clearer in telling us, the reader, is that you can't stand on the sidelines. When it comes to belief, when it comes to faith, when it comes to, uh, you know, ideas, philosophies, you have to believe in something. You can't choose neutrality. To choose neutrality is to be stuck, and you will forever be stuck in that neutrality. You don't get a heavenly reward, but you don't get a, a negative reward, but you are tormented. And so these souls, to illustrate this, and this is very clear throughout the rest of the Inferno, all of the sinners in hell get their sin. They get it in a way that they don't expect it. And so for the undecided, they're placed on this, think of it as like a giant beach with this storm going back and forth. And the sound you hear are their cries, but it's also the buzzing of these insects that are coming and stinging these bodies, these souls, as they rush from one side of the beach to the other, chasing flags of different colors. They see a red flag and they run after it because that's what they want. Then they see a, a white flag and they change their mind and they chase after that. So they're constantly in this kind of um, state of indecision. And that's how they, and, and they're stung by it. They, they don't get relief from it. There's no relief, there's no joy, uh, there, there's even no unhappiness if you can't decide. You simply live a state of neutrality. But the afterlife is such that it's not gonna be easy for you. And hence the insects begin to sting these bodies. And I, Master, what torments do they suffer and force them to lament so bitterly? He answered, I will tell you in few words. These wretches have no hope of truly dying, and this blind life they lead is so abject it makes them envy every other fate. The world will not record their having been there. Heaven's mercy and its justice turn from them. Let's not discuss them. Look and pass them by. They don't even get the benefit of having their names remembered. They will be forgotten as if they never existed. And so I looked and saw a kind of banner rushing ahead, whirling with aimless speed as though it would never take a stand. Behind it, an interminable train of souls pressed on, so many that I wondered how death would not have undone so great a number. When I had recognized a few of them, I saw the shade of one who must have been the coward who made the great refusal. 
had once I understood this would be uh, this would be Pontius Pilate who refused to decide. He washed his hands of it all. He doesn't even get into into hell. Okay, um, he's so much on the outside. At once I understood and I was sure that this was the sect of evil souls who were hateful to God and to his enemies. These wretches who never truly lived went naked and were stung and stung again by the hornets and wasps that circled them and made their faces run with blood and streaks. Their blood mixed with their tears dripped to their feet and disgusting maggots collected in the pus. Here the great imagery of Dante's hell which we will see through the humanities, through art, through sculpture, and you'll see some of those in these lectures, uh, the artist has found a way to give Dante's words some kind of visual representation. Um, and some great paintings and sculptures will come out of this. Then, when I looked beyond this crowd, I saw a throng upon the shore of a wide river, which made me ask, Master, I would like to know, who are these people, and what law is this that makes this soul so eager for the crossing, as I can see even in the dim light? And he, all this will be made plain to you as soon as we shall come to a stop a while upon the sorrowful shores of Asheron. Now, there are four great rivers in hell. The first one is the Asheron, okay? And the river Asheron is where we find Sharon, the ferryman, who takes you across into that first level of hell, which is where we find Limbo. This is the first, if you want to think of it as a border. So we have the Asheron, and then the next river we will get to um, is going to be the, the river of blood called Phlegathon, where we find the violent beneath. Then we get the Styx, the river Styx. And finally, at the floor level of hell, we have the final river, which is the frozen river Coxitus. I'll talk about each of these as we move forward in the lecture. But this is the river Asheron. And I, with eyes cast down in shame for fear that I perhaps had spoken out of turn, said nothing more until we reached the river. And suddenly coming toward us in a boat, a man of years, whose ancient hair was white, shouted at us, Woe to you, perverted souls! Give up all hope of ever seeing heaven. I come to lead you to the other shore, into eternal darkness, ire, ice, and fire. And you, the living soul, you over there, get away from all these people who are dead. But when I saw, when he saw I did not move aside, he said, Another way by other ports, not here shall you pass to reach the other shore. A lighter skiff than this must carry you. So Sharon forbids him. He says, You're human, you're alive, you're not allowed on this boat. Um, so he's the first person in hell that Dante's actually talked to besides Virgil. And he's yelling at him and he's saying, This is not proper, this is not by the rules, we must follow the divine prescription, and you're human, you're not allowed. And Virgil is going to intercede and say, wait a minute, big guy. He's got a special per permission. He's got a dispensation for above. We're on a mission from God. And my guide, Sharon, this is no time for anger. It is so willed. There where the power is for what is will, that's all you need to know. These words brought silence to the woolly cheeks of the ancient steersmen of the livid marsh, whose eyes were set in glowing wheels of fire. But all those souls there, naked and in despair, changed color, and their teeth began to chatter at the sound of his announcement of their doom. They were cursing God, cursing their own parents, the human race, the time, the place, the seed of their beginning and their day of birth. Then, all together, weeping bitterly, they packed themselves along the wicked shore that waits for every man who fears not God. The devil Sharon, with eyes of glowing coals, summoned them together, and with a signal, and with an oar, he strikes the laggard sinner. As in autumn, when the leaves begin to fall, one after the other, until the branch is witness to the spoils spread on the ground, so did the evil seed of Adam's fall drop from that shore to the boat, one at a time, at the signal, like the falcon to its lure. Away they go across the darkened waters, um, so the evil seed of Adam's fall, this is going to be Cain, okay? So Cain is among these um, who has not chosen, uh, or who actually who's waiting to kind of board this, uh, this skiff that moves so, so quickly against the Asheron. My son, the gentle master, said to me, all those who perish in the wrath of God assemble here from all parts of the earth. They want to cross the river. They are eager. It is divine justice that spurs them on, turning the fear they have into desire. A good soul never comes to make this crossing. 
So if Sharon grumbles at the sight of you, and you see now what his words are really saying, he finished speaking, and the grim terrain shook violently, and the fright it gave me, even now in recollection, makes me sweat. Out of the tear-drenched land a wind arose, which blasted forth into the reddish light, knocking my senses out of me completely, and I fell as one falls tired into his sleep. And so the first time Dante faints, he collapses, um, and then he is boarded onto the ship. Virgil takes him, and he crosses where he will meet Minos uh, and, and wait for his judgment. And that's it for today.